Like they all are, but this one is really yeah. We're still talking about the prophet, that most special prophet, Jesus Christ. We don't, no matter what the subject today, is the power to draw. The power to draw. This world today runs on on ratings. We have a TV show. I hate it when I do a, a new series comes out. And I happen to catch it as a new series, which is very rare. And I enjoy it. Then you watch the whole season, then next year they cancel it. And it's canceled because of the ratings. I guess enough folks want to like me to enjoy this so they take it out. I was thinking that Jesus was on television today. His ratings would be through the roof. Because he had a power. I'm going to give you an illustration of a few scriptures before we went to the main text. I can skip to it. There's one occasion where he talked. 5,000 were gathered together. We hear that story so many times, you don't think about the magnitude of it. 5,000 people. And then they come for just a 30 minute message, like I hope this one's going to be. <laughs> that was kind of a joke about that. <laughs> they came and stayed for three days. That's hard to imagine. I don't think anybody packed a lunch, or much of a lunch. I don't think anybody expected to be overnight. They didn't bring the toothbrush or pajamas. I'm trying to visualize going to hear Jesus teach on a Friday morning and going home Sunday night. That's hard to imagine. He had to, if you fill the multitude, he had to escape. So he escaped in a ship. And he went around to the other side of the alleged Nazareth. And it says that many who heard him teach those three days, the way the, I think Mark writes it, he said they took the shipping. <laughs> Much little boats. I, I can visualize this scene so easily from my time in New York when they had a big parade in 1976 to celebrate a 200th anniversary. And now all these tall ships come to New York. And New York Harbor was full of at least 10,000 little boats on the harbor. They're, they're, they're blocking the shipping lanes and causing a problem. Same way they did this thing here. All these people had boats, and most of them were fishermen. They took some from their boats and went on to the side looking for Jesus. That's when gave me a message that they didn't like about laboring for the meat that doesn't perish. And that day, after three days teaching, he lost 5,000 meters. By those standards, I'm quite a success. I've been carrying most of this number for quite a few years. So. That's good. I've done better than Noah. <laughs> That's one occasion. Then he went to the Gentiles, to the, the cities of the Decapolis, Decca meaning ten. There was ten cities in the metropolitan area, and he fed four thousand. I put flesh and blood on this. How do you think the religious leaders felt about his crowds? They hated him. They could barely, they could barely fill the temple when they talked. And he came to the temple and talked and packed it out. And they sat back in this, and they sent some people to try to catch him in his words. Let's try to, let's try to find some kind of reason.
to, number one, take away his power of his audience. An audience is power. The Christian coalition, those kind of movements, so they are powerful movements in Washington, D.C. And Jesus became very powerful because of his followers. And they hated it because of that. They wanted to take away his power. So you, you, you take him out the monitor, or best yet, best yet, going to the service, and just try to trip him up in the service. That's to get the last week of the line when they came in and asked him, they said, let's get him on the, on the tax issue. Because he says, don't pay tax to Caesar. He was calling him for insurrection, taking him to court, the Roman court, have him killed. Jesus was the most clever man they ever come across in their life. He said, he said, he said, he said well, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? And there's one thing one of the gospel writers says, he, he deeply sighed like, like, I'm sick of this. He said, show me a penny. I brought my penny. Whose picture's on it? He said, Caesar. He said, they're rendering to Caesar the things that are Caesar. And to God, the things that are God. If Jesus wasn't teaching giving, I don't know what he's teaching. The way he reason the Greek was render to God the things that are God and pay off Caesar. Mm -hmm. Giving taxes, paying taxes is not the same as giving tithes. Right. Not at all. Go to Matthew chapter 20. This is where a few illustrations. We 
we saw the Rose Bowl parade recently. But imagine a one man parade with no flow. A whole, a, 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 a ass and a baby ass. That's it. It wasn't pre planned. And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. After that great glorious entry, he went in and turned the temple out. <laughs> he didn't bask in fame too long before he, he messes up. Turn to Mark. Mark writes about Jesus with a personal touch the other Gospels don't give. Mark, by the way, is the first Gospel written. It's just listed second. Chapter 2. Verse 13. And he went forth again by the seaside. And all the multitude resorted <clears throat> unto him. He couldn't shake them. So what did he do? And he taught them. Why not? Chapter 3. after he does a miracle of healing and the man had a withered hand caused some problems afterwards. Verse 3 says, the citizen man which had a withered hand, stand forth. And he said to them, before he does it, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil? To save a life or to kill, he said, them up. But the other piece. That's a simple question, right? Mm -hmm. They're so leery of him by now with these multitudes that they're scared to answer the question. <laughs> Easy question. Is the law for to do good or evil on the Sabbath day? Is the law for to save a life on the Sabbath day? Or kill somebody. Who held their peace? The religious leaders. Because in front of the multitude, we don't give, give him any fuel. And when he looked round upon them, about them, about on them of anger, what's he angry about? Nothing made Jesus more upset than mealy mouthed leaders, <laughs> melt toast leaders who couldn't even answer a question, so afraid of their position. And they've been smart. Then they got on the Jesus bandwagon and promoted him. They said, this is the prophet. This is the prophet Moses talked about. He's here. Hear ye him. And promote him. And everybody would have prospered. When he looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth, and straightway, immediately, took counsel with the Herodians, there's some strange bedfellows, against him, how they might destroy him. The power of people behind him. Chapter 4. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a great multitude. Now that one was very great. This one was just great. Which again, I believe, it exceeded 5,000 people. So he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea 
of the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto him in his doctrine, Hearken, listen, behold, and look. And that's when you get this great discourse by this prophet on the parable of the sowers. It's the first of seven parables that I hope the Lord allows us here, as we study these, to link them with the seven churches. And the same message to the seven churches. The first parable is about, about the word. The word of God going forth. Go on the grounds and so forth. In your first church, the accusation is you left your first love, which was the person he gave him the word. Chapter 5. I know I've made my case now that I can know. Well, that's like reading about Jesus. Yeah. Uh, can't help it. This is that great story of the woman with the issue of blood. 25, 24. And Jesus went with him, the man, Jairus, came to him and said his daughter's sick. And he asked Jesus to come and lay hands on her. So she should be healed and live. And so Jesus said, I'll, I'll, I'll come in and heal her. But on the way, something happened. Let's read it, 24. And Jesus went with, with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. To be thronged means that there's no breathing room. He's being pressed on, on all sides. And to make his way to the, the Jairus' house, was going to be a journey because it wasn't just him trying to get there. He's dragging a few thousand along with him. They don't understand what the problem is. Then to make matters worse, I'll put yourself in, in, in the man's position. Your daughter is home about to die. He gets the one man he knows that can change things. And then when Jesus says, I'll come, then this woman shows up and slows down the whole parade that's already gone slow. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many positions and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but it rather grew worse. Put, put a flesh of blood on that. Sick looking for a remedy. And it says she suffered many things, many positions, and spent all her savings, her children's education fund. She had children, uh -huh. but she spent everything she had. She's probably pawned all her good stuff in her house. Probably hawked her house, and it was getting worse. When she heard of, I should say. The Jesus. There are the Jesus. This is a special one. When she heard of the Jesus, came in the press, in the press behind. What's the press? The crowd. And touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Right faith. And straightway, for somebody who needs to be healed right now. Yeah. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. I'll testify at the end of the message, okay? Yes. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and saying, Who touched me? That thus was crazy. They're joshing him around. He's being moved around by the, by the, by the crowd. All I can remember in my childhood, in this kind of event, was I saw when President Kennedy was campaigning for office. He made a whistle stop in our hometown. 
And like most little small towns, they had a little square in the middle of downtown. And everybody went to the square. I think the whole city turned out. There's about 30,000 people. And I was little. I'm trying to see the president. Who I think is going to be the president. And I remember pushing through people as his motorcade came by. And I saw President Kennedy, the biggest day of my life. And I immediately got pushed aside by somebody else. And then the car started moving, trying to follow the car. And I actually got trampled to death. Right? You know? I can see the scene. Big crowd following here. Chapter 8. In those days, the multitude being very great. This is the 5,000 he's speaking of here. Let's get one more witness in the book of John. Then we'll tie it all together. And I'll be finished. Hopefully, before 2 o'clock. It was very nice. John chapter 6. Where are that one? Okay. Let's go to let's go to the heart of the message. John chapter 6. Verse 35. Back it up. Now this this is I'm telling you right now. This is my most favorite chapter of all the Gospels. Right here, so listen up. We're going, back. We're going to start with verse number 31. Our Father to the man in the order in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, what they're doing, they're trying to make Jesus look like he was less important than Moses. Look at verse 30. They said, therefore, to him, what sign showest thou them? That we may see and believe thee. Tell me now that never be established. What dost thou work? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, by the way. Now my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. It's a red to talk about from Moses. Moses didn't give that bread. But my father gave you something better. He gave you the true bread. <laughs> For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven. Let's look at this way. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven. <laughs> and giveth life to the world. They said unto him, Lord, not everybody, Lord evermore gives us bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. I don't think y'all expected that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believes on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. What's he saying? To you all who believe not, the Father ain't trying to save you. <laughs> Their folks just don't believe. And God's not twisting by his arm to believe. That's the most simplest thing to do, to believe. And those who don't, okay, don't. I told a couple of people in my lifetime, I said, maybe God's not interested in you. I told them that with great trepidation. And only after they refuse every offering of salvation that God had given them, uh, you know, that's my goodness. So maybe God, I want you. I ain't gonna try to explain any more to you about God. For I came out from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which He hath given me, I should lose nothing. I love that. The Father gave us to him. He said, I'm not going to lose it, nothing. He's saying, your salvation is sure. 
You got that? It's not about how you get lost. He said, I'm not going to lose you. It's not in your hands. I won't lose you. Why? The Father gave it to me. I don't lose. You <laughs> know that's called the winning problem. <coughs> but she raised up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise up the last day. Don't you love that? Anybody who sees me and believes on me will have everlasting life. That's as good as it gets. He didn't call for hands. How many believe? How many want to be saved? He just knew. Anybody who, who sees me, everyone that seeth me, you see him, and believes on him, everlasting life. Getting saved has always been easy. The church has made it complicated by having folks jump through all kinds of hoops and doing this and doing that and not doing this and not doing that. It's never been that message. Whoever sees me and believes on me, you will be saved. Run with that. Then the Jews, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread that just came out from him. Here they go. And they said, it's not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. This thing ain't nobody. I, it's amazing to me how in God's word that along the opportunity to believe and be saved, he also leaves enough in there not to believe. Those who want to see him as just being Mary and Joseph's son, and they're nobody. He's the little lowly carpenter, blue collar worker, whose father and mother we know. How is it he said, then that he said, I came down from heaven? Why well, ask him? <laughs> So sit there and murmur among yourselves and reason among yourselves and find a reason not to believe him, just ask him. Right. Why did you say he came up from heaven? Because I did. Right. Right. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Murmur not among yourselves. Don't do that. Let's get it straight. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. <laughs> Close. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Don't try to find the reason not to believe me. Right. If you believe me and the Father didn't want you, you can't come. Right. You got people, I, I didn't mean, I haven't met anybody in the last year, but, <laughs> <laughs> but when I was active, I'd meet, you brought me, I would meet people all the time who would look for reasons to see me not to believe. I understand it for a long time. Right. Then I realized that God ain't drawn them. Wow. That's why I'm witnessing to people. You get, you get to understand the ones who will hear your testimony are the ones the Father's drawing. Oh, yeah. Those who rebuke, refute everything you say and argue things or anything, He ain't drawn them. Leave them alone. Wow. I met people who talk about when I join up, <laughs> not realizing you don't pick that time. Right. You don't pick the time to come to God. He picks it. He said, you can't come to me unless my father draws you. You can make all the plans you want. If you don't draw you, your plans mean nothing. Right. It's an honor plan. No more than being born the first time. Naturally, was not anything to do with that. You got born the first time by accident. Right? Yeah. It's a biological thing. Yeah. Being born the second time is a spiritual thing. Right. This is accidental. Right. The father wants you. Draws you and you're born again. Thank you, Lord. And nobody can keep you out. Ooh, and he won't lose you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. No man can come to me except the Father, which has sent me, draw him. And I'll raise him up in the last days. Verse 51. I am the living bread, which came out from heaven. If any man, any man, Eat of this bread, he shall live forever. I'm going to tell you right now, that's why I'm in here. Amen. That's what I'm all about. I'm following the Lord. I want eternal life. Amen. And he's offering it. Amen. So why not? Yes. 
Why not? Amen. I mean, somebody said that you can live forever? Yes. The quest and the dream of everybody? I mean, Ponce de Leon sells 4,000 miles to find a final life in Florida to live forever, and God says, it's right here. Right. Out the fountain. Yeah. Right. Ain't got to go nowhere. Just believe on me. Right. <laughs> and live forever. Yeah. He makes a promise, and those who believe on me, I know you are, and I will raise you over the last day. If you happen to die, believe in me, don't worry about it. The promise is still good after you die. Right. <laughs> My God. Yeah. I mean, insurance to me is kind of a tricky thing. Yeah. It's like you can't cash in until you're dead. <laughs> it's good for your people. <laughs> 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 But you don't get it. And I don't like that. You know, there's a peace of mind on they're taking care of. And sure have been on my mind a lot lately. I'm, I'm just between the hard place and the rock. It's like, I'm leaving here soon. And no special to die before then. And if I did, I don't want to live it to my children because I don't expect them to be here either. All right. All right. So it's a problem for me. Yeah. So I'm going to wait until 2018. Sign <laughs> 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 up in. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> the problems are all you get, the more it costs. Okay? Yes. So, yes. You know, I, just, well, I, just, I just made a decision just now. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <That's my> <laughs> Let's get into the message. John chapter 12. Jesus talked about being, making a transition. He talked about the, the Holy Ghost is going to give, be like rivers of water. He said that he was speaking of the Holy Ghost, but it wasn't yet given because he was not yet glorified. He was not in the glorified body on the earth for 33 and a half years. He was a regular man. Right? But he made a statement and said, I'm, I'm going to go away. I go to the Father. What are you going to do? I'm going to change hats. I'm going to take off the sun hat and the suffering servant hat and put in the glorified hat. The hat of the Father. Understand? The one who drew in the first place was the Father. Right? right. And he said that, you know, everybody who the Father draws, draws in me, I don't know why he's cast him out and I should lose nothing. What happens when he then takes on that capacity as a father. Well, read it right here. It tells you what happened in chapter 12. glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway, straightway glorify him. I'm in the wrong chapter. Yes, chapter 12.